<laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Meredith Abbott and welcome to Sir Tab. Today I'm going to be making a one pot orzo with zucchini, feta, and sweet corn recipe. This recipe is perfect for any summertime, weeknight, weekend, special occasion meal. For this recipe, you need olive oil, salt, pepper, vegetable or chicken stock, feta, parsley, orzo, lemon, garlic, onion, green onion, zucchini, and corn. Okay, I've got my onion diced, my zucchini diced, I'm ready to start. This recipe comes together really easily. You can use a variety of pans. I have a 10 inch skillet here that has a lid that fits. You can use a saucepan, a brazier, a Dutch oven, anything with larger than a three, three and a half quart capacity will work great for this. So to start, I'm going to preheat my skillet, medium high heat. I'm going to add my oil. And when the oil is hot and shimmering, I'm going to add my onion and zucchini. And what you're looking for is if you look kind of across the surface of your oil and you see the top of it shimmer or dance a little bit, that's when you know your oil is hot. Okay, I can see the top of my oil kind of shimmering a little bit. It's moving around the pan pretty easily, more like water, and go ahead and add in my ingredients. Onion, and zucchini. Great bench scraper, helps move all of your diced zucchini from your cutting board into the skillet. Give it a stir. You wanna coat everything nicely in that oil just so it's going to brown evenly. If you're feeling fancy, you can toss it. Give your pan a little wiggle. I'm going to cook this, stirring it occasionally until the onions are soft and translucent, about four minutes or so. It's okay if it gets a little bit of color. This recipe is pretty versatile. You could swap in any of your kind of favorite fresh seasonal vegetables into this. This is super versatile. This is really more about the method than the actual ingredients themselves. At this point, I am going to lightly season the zucchini and the onions just to start building up some flavors, but I'm gonna go really light on it because I'll add seasoning throughout the recipe. So a little bit of salt and pepper, just about a pinch of each. Okay, so my zucchini is starting to brown a little bit. My onions are nice and soft and translucent. I'm going to now add in my garlic. I'm just gonna cook the garlic for about a minute. I don't really want any color on it. I'm just letting it get nice and aromatic. I'm also going to add in my orzo. Orzo is a pasta. It's kind of shaped like rice, but it is in fact a pasta. So I'm gonna add this in to the pot. And orzo is really lovely if you toast it for a bit. So it's got, there's a little bit of oil still in the pan from the vegetables. I'm just going to stir it around. And toasting the orzo gives it kind of a more nutty flavor. Let this cook and toast for a few minutes. You'll start to smell the garlic and you might hear the orzo pop a little bit. You can stir it while throughout. Wonderful, I see some color developing on some of the orzo pieces. So at this point, I'm going to add in my vegetable stock. Careful, it might bubble up, so just beware. I'm gonna just, I'm going to give it a stir, just to make sure that everything's coated. I'm 
let it simmer for a second, then I'm going to cover it, turn down the heat just so it's at a low simmer, and cook it until the orzo is finished. I'm going to lower the heat to low, cover it, while my orzo is simmering, I'm going to finish prepping the rest of my ingredients. I have my feta here that I'll crumble later. Um, to start, I'm going to chop my parsley. So pick the leaves off the stems. We just want a rough chop to our parsley leaves. This is going to not only add some color, uh, it adds a really nice bright flavor to the dish as well if you had basil on hand, you could sub in some basil or whatever kind of tender green herb you have at home. So to start, I bundle everything up, run my knife through in one direction, and then I use this rocking motion back and forth to cut the parsley into small little pieces, about the size of confetti. Doesn't have to be perfect or precise. Just looking for kind of small flex. Okay, easy does that. I have a great little prep bowl, my bench scraper to help me gather up all of my chopped parsley. Slide that right into the bowl. Give your hands a little wipe. And now I'm going to thinly slice my green onions. So I'm going to hold this bunch together with my thumb and my pinky, keeping them all together, fingertips down, knuckles out, and thinly slice these ends. The greens of the green onions give such a wonderful, mild, oniony flavor, and they retain their texture, so they stay pretty nice and crunchy as well. So go just till it starts turning light green. Stop, carefully wipe off your blade. Again, use these for something else. Grab a prep dish, bench scraper again. Gather it up and carefully transfer them in to a prep bowl. You can add more green onion if you'd like, it's up to you. This is here as a flavor enhancer, so easy to customize. And then my lemon. I need to zest my lemon. I'll juice it later. So I'm just gonna zest it right onto my cutting board. How I like to do that, I like to rest the end of my microplane grater against the cutting board just so when I press against it, it's not kind of squirreling around. Some people like to hold it like this. I feel like I have more control with my microplane when I kind of anchor it against my cutting board. Long swipes with your lemon as you kind of rotate through. I'm just trying to get off that bright yellow outer layer of the lemon peel because that's where all of that wonderful lemony flavor is. Work your way around. Tap this to release any zest that's stuck. Great. Again, grab the bench scraper, gather into your prep bowl. I'm gonna cut my lemon in half so it's ready for me later. And now I have finished my mise en place. Okay, my timer just went off to check my orzo. So carefully take the lid off. Most lids will be hot, so please grab a dry towel or an oven mitt. I'm going to take my fork and fluff it gently to check to make sure that the broth has been absorbed. And then also I'm going to take a bite out of one of the orzo pieces to make sure it's done. So just carefully drag your fork through. Don't scrape the bottom of the pan. Just kind of drag through. We want to fluff. So, so far this is looking great. <laughs> I'm going to get one piece of orzo and I'm going to test it to make sure it's done. Mmm, it's cooked through. There's still a little chew to it, a little al dente, which is perfect. So at this point, I'm going to add in my corn, my lemon zest, 
parsley, green onions, and a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. So about a half a teaspoon of salt or so. A little bit of pepper. Stir this in. The heat of the orzo and onions and zucchini is going to cook the corn through and heat up the green onions, heat up the parsley, so they become very aromatic. I can smell the lemon zest. I'm going to now juice in a half of a lemon. I need about a tablespoon, which is usually about a half of a lemon. I'm going to squeeze the lemon through my fingers to catch any seeds. Use your fingertips like a cup. They'll collect any seed and then just gently open them up slightly to let the juice go through. Stir that through. I'm gonna give it one more taste to make sure I like the seasoning on it. Mmm. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. Probably another half a teaspoon or so. Fold that through. Now that your orzo is finished and all your vegetables are stirred through, take it from stovetop to tabletop and crumble the feta right before you dig in. Enjoy. For recipe videos, cooking classes, and more, visit surlatob.com.